Hello, welcome to College Algebra section 12.2. My name is Rob Reynolds. Today we're going to be looking at systems of linear equations and how to solve them using matrices. In 12.1, we solved them uh, by hand. And here we go in 12.2. Uh, we're going to look at how we can take a system. Uh, here's a one system and a two system. And we're going to take all these coefficients. Uh, 1, 4, and 14, and we're just going to dump them into a matrix, 1, 4, and 14. In other words, we're getting rid of the variables x's and y's. This represents, 1, 4, 14 represents this. And notice that I'm replacing the equal sign with just a bar here, and I'll explain that in a minute. But here's the left-hand side of the equation, and here's the right-hand side of the equation. So uh, these elements inside are called, uh, this is term row one, column one. So the rows go this direction and the columns go down. And you can remember that because columns are spelled with the letter L, uh, this vertical line. So this would be um, in row two, that's why you stick it, A sub two sub, so it's not really 21, it means row two, column one, and, and so on and so forth. So this means row one, column two and so on and so forth. All right, so augmented matrices um, are uh, matrices that uh, are just dumped into, taking the system and just dumping it into um, a matrix. So the augmented matrix, replacing the equal sign with this bar, I'll just go three, negative four, two, negative three, negative six, negative five, and I've done with part A. Uh, there's, the, there's the answer. So for part B, you have to be kind of careful because this negative one, needs to kind of be over there. So you need all your x's and y's on one side and all the answers on the other side. And check it out. I think you're missing a y term here. So you're going to have to create some zeros. Oh, and it looks like you need a 0z zero as well. So uh, be careful when you're uh, going. Uh, this one, remember, goes over here. So it becomes a positive one. And you had to create some zeros uh, for your augmented matrix. So you need, a, you need a term for every row and element. All right, so let's go the opposite direction. If I give you an augmented matrix, can you write this system? I think so. This is your x terms here. These are your y terms, so it's a positive 2y is equal to 13. And oops, similarly, negative 3x plus y is equal to negative 10. And over here, you can see you just have a couple of zeros that you'll have to contend with. Um, and you'll be able to write a uh, system of equation. Uh, this is part A. And then for part B, you're going to have to just throw in some zeros, or just you can go 0x if you want, but it's probably best. 0 times x is just nothing, so it's probably best just to leave uh, nothing. So again, we feel comfortable taking a system and writing an augmented matrix, and then taking an augmented matrix and writing the system back and forth. So perform some um, operations uh, on this. Um, we are going to, first of all, this says replace row 2 with a new row two, we're gonna do nothing with row one. So I'm just gonna rewrite uh, row one as one, negative two, and two. But we're gonna replace this yellow row with a new yellow row. And here's the definition that we're gonna use. It says do negative three, so let's take negative three times row one I like to write it over here, so negative 3 times row 1. I'm going to add row 2 and come up with a new row 2. So let's do it. Negative 3 times this term is negative 3 times this term is 6. Negative 3 times 2 is negative 6. Just rewrite row 2. 3, negative 5, and 9. And then let's add those up. 0, 1, and 3. And that's my new row two, zero, one, and three. You don't know why they're getting a zero there, um, but it looks to me like they're uh, trying to get the identity matrix one, zero, zero, one, and that would be the first step in getting the identity. This is always the first zero that you want to get um, in getting the identity matrix. And then these are going to be your answers over here, but I haven't taught that yet. That's an incoming. Here's how the author uh, solved it. So this time we're going to do. We're going to have a new row 2 and a new row 3. So we do nothing with row 1. I'm just going to rewrite row, run, row 1. 
Row 2 is negative 3 times row 1 and add it to row 2 and come up with a new row 2. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, negative 3 times each term. Negative 3 times that 4. And negative 3 times that 3. Just rewrite row 2, which is right here. That just gets replaced. So I'm not going to do anything to it. It doesn't say to do anything, so I'll just rewrite it. And I'll add this up. And I'll replace that with my new row 2. So 0, 4, negative 6, negative 3. Isn't that nice that they have a 0 there? Again, working closer and closer to the identity matrix. So uh, if I take 5 times row 1, which is what the definition says, and then add that to row 3, I should have a new row 3, which I want to write this new row 3, whatever that answer is, goes right here. So let's go ahead and find out what uh, 5 times row 1 is. So we're going to take 5 times every element in row 1. So 5 times 1, 5 times the negative 3, 20, and 15. Next, I'm just going to rewrite row 3, um, and row 3 is right here, so I don't do anything to that. I just transfer that down, uh, negative 5, 3, 4, and 6, and then adding this up, um, I'll get 0, negative 12, 24, and 21, and that z goes right up here. And notice that they gave you another zero there, which again, you don't know why they're doing that. Uh, but we're getting closer and closer to this idea. So let's see, negative 12, 24, 21. And this is what the author has, it looks like too. Negative 12, yep, yep, yep. Negative 12, 24, 21. But again, I keep, keep talking about that identity matrix, which is uh, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1 and then you have some answers, x, y, in this case, z, because you have one x, no y's, no z's, is my x answer, no x's, one y, no z's, and this says no x's, no y's, and one z equals my z answer. So we'll get to the identity matrix here in a moment. So solving using some uh, row echelon and matrices. Row echelon just means we don't have the identity matrix all together. We, we just have part of the identity matrix. Uh, reduced row echelon would be the entire uh, identity matrix over here, 1, 0, 0. But if it's just row echelon, so later on we're going to get reduced row echelon form. Um, and that's when I have the, uh, that identity matrix on the left and the answers are on the right. This is just called row echelon form. <clears throat> and then I can do back substitution because look at this. I have the value of z uh, because z would be, in this case, f. And then I could back substitute, if I have the answer for that, I could plug that in to the second line and then take those two answers and plug them in the first line and actually do back substitution and solve. So here's the definition of that row echelon, not reduced row echelon, but just row echelon. So it says using row echelon, let's see if we can use that back substitution and actually solve. So I'm going to dump this into a matrix and I'm using my zero. So here's 1x, one 1y, one 1z, one and... 3, 4, negative 1, and 13. So again, my first goal uh, is, is to get this to be a 0. And I can accomplish that uh, by uh, multiplying row 2 by negative uh, 2. Because negative 2 times row 2 and then add it back to row 1 will give me a new row 2, and I, I hopefully I'll have a 0 where that yellow dot is at. That's the goal. So if I multiply this 1 by a negative 2 and add 2 and negative 2, I'll get the 0. So let's do it. Uh, negative 2 times row 2 would be um, negative 2, negative 2, negative 2, negative 2. Uh, row 1 is 2, 2, 0, 6. And so my new row 2 is going to be written as 0, 0, negative 2, and 4, which I haven't shown you, but there is a trick here. Uh, remember, the only row that's going to change here is the row that we're trying to change. We were trying to, we were trying to get a zero in that yellow slot, and we did. 
Uh, that zero is this zero right here, because that's my coming from my new row two. Uh, but the trick is, uh, the only row that's changing is the row that you're changing. So you you don't have to you, you don't have to do anything to this top row, but I want to. I want to show you that you can actually divide that top row through by one, uh, two. Divide every term by two, and we get one, one, zero, three. That kind of helps simplify and reduce. And this one, I think I can divide everything through by two. So instead of writing zero, zero, negative two, and four, I'm going to write zero, uh, zero, negative one, and a two. Again, remember, these are just systems of equations. This says zero x plus zero y minus two z is equal to four. Well, if it says minus two z is equal to four, you can divide by negative two and just get one z is equal to negative two, which is what I've written over here. Um, yeah, I, oh, I divided by 2, I'm so sorry. So, so this is a negative, I, should, I could have divided through by a negative 2, it doesn't matter. That's the point. So the next goal is to probably get a 0 down here, because why? Well, remember, we're trying to get all of, so I just got this 0, so now I'm going after this 0 down here, because i got to get all three of those uh, to be zeros. So I've got a yellow 0, I'm going for that blue 0, uh, which means I need to, uh, look at this matrix uh, here and try to get a zero in here is my is my next goal and the rule states if you're in column one use row one so I'm in column one uh, I'm in column one to try to get this zero so I want to use row one and I'm going to use this one to get uh, a, a zero. Well, I've got a, I've got a three uh, from this, but remember, I haven't really, I'm not really using this two, I'm really using this one. So all I have to do is multiply this one by uh, negative three. So negative three times row one and add it back to row three will give me a new uh, row three. Let's see if that works. So negative 3 times row 1, but instead of using this as row 1, remember I've kind of reduced it. So let's use this negative 3 times this row 1. So negative 3, negative 3, 0, negative 9. Uh, and then this row 3 is, is actually, this, this is the row 3 that I have to bring, just transport that down here. So 3, 4, negative 1, and 13. So here comes my new row. Yay, I got the 0. That's what I was looking for. Uh, 0, 1, negative 1, I'm adding this up. Uh, what is that for? So uh, 1, negative 1, and 4. The last goal is to go for this blue one, uh, and I'm trying to make this one a 0, and then I'll have it in row echelon form. Not reduced row echelon form, but row echelon form. So again, I am in column 2. So let's see, here's column 1, here's column 2. So I'm in column two, and so I want to use uh, row two. For column two. Actually, can I show you one more trick? Um, there's nothing wrong with swapping rows. This is kind of interesting. Since I have two zeros here, can I just transfer these two zeros down on the bottom and make that zero, zero, uh, I could even multiply through by uh, a negative and change this sign and this sign. So that'll be a 1 and a negative 2. Uh, and then I'm going to write this row. So I'm swapping my second row and my third row. So 0, 1, negative 1, and 4. And I'm just going to leave the top row. 1, 1, 0, 3. So all I did was swap. And I can do that. And the reason why I want to do this, because look, I've accomplished my goal already. I didn't have to do uh, any more math because... I've now I have this nice one 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 diagonal. I have those blue zeros down there, and so I, I'm in row echelon form. And check it out, I've got the z value down here. This says one z is equal to negative two, and and that's important information because if I were to write this equation right here, it would read zero x plus y minus z is equal to four. But I know uh, that z is negative 2, so we could actually plug that in um, and actually solve this thing for y. Uh, 
by subtracting off 2, so y is 2. And, and then all I have to do is back substitute again. So this top line says x plus y equals 3. And, and I know the value of y. y is 2. So I'll say x plus 2 equals 3, so x equals 1. And you might want to write the answer in an ordered pair. Uh, x, here comes your y, and here comes your z. So we didn't get this in reduced row echelon form, but you don't have to. Row echelon form and do back substitution. 1, 2, negative 2. I'll give you a hot one. Here's, here's how they offer to it. Boom. Uh, they, they got the same thing here, didn't they? Certainly. So yeah. Z equals negative 2. And boom. There's, there's the solution. 1, 2, negative 2. Good, good, good. So there's your uh, definition for row echelon form and the examples. Uh, the rest of this is just more examples you can work through. Um, these on your own. The goal is to replace all those stars with actually numbers and then do back substitution and, and solve. So if you would like to work this problem out, you could try that. Just pause the video here. Uh, but for those that uh, just kind of want to skip to the answer, um, again, I work it out just a little bit different because I show my work just a little bit differently. But uh, the answer should be the same, which is 4, negative 3, 1. So work through that. So reduced row echelon form says we have all zeros. Not only do we have zeros down in the bottom left, we also have the zeros. So this is called the identity matrix. This says 1x is 4, 1y is negative 3, and 1z is 31. So you could actually repeat this entire process and just continue uh, getting ones and zeros. So here's another example I don't know if you want me to work through uh, this in its entirety. But I'll give you some, some good rules uh, that I think are helpful when you're solving these by hand. Of course, the next video I'll, I'll show you how to actually uh, solve these um, using a calculator. Uh, and then all these rules go out the window. Uh, but sometimes it's helpful to do this uh, by hand. So the, there are some rules, and, uh, and I'll write them out for you. Rule number one is to go for zeros. Uh, don't worry about the ones. And rule number two, there's an exception to rule number uh, one. And the exception is, unless it's easy um, to get, uh, unless you can get a one in the upper left-hand corner, uh, then, then, I would, then I would try it without going, going for fractions. And, and what I mean by that is, um, let's suppose that this problem looks like, like this. Well, uh, if this is the problem, then I would just swap that third row with the first row, and I would have a 1 in the upper left-hand corner. So if, if, if it's really easy without getting fractions, I mean, the book shows how to work this through fractions, but I would have tried to avoid the fractions. So unless it's easy to get a 1, then I would go for the zeros. And then step number 3 I kind of already uh, sh sh shared with you. Um, uh, the only row that changes... The only row that's changing uh, is the row you are changing, which means what? Uh, I'm trying to go for, uh, well, when it says go for zeros, maybe I should qualify. What order should I go for the zeros in? So it's 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, uh, 0, 0, 1, and then these are your answers, x, y, z. So the first zero I would go for is this one. So this is the order. One, two, uh, this is the third zero, this is the fourth zero, fifth zero, and sixth zero. So go for your zeros in column one first, then go for the zeros in column two, and then go for the zeros in column three. So that's what I mean by go for, go for your zeros. Go for the zeros in that order, unless it's really easy to get a one in that one. Then the only row that's changed is the row that you're trying to change it because remember you're trying to change this guy to have a zero there. So the only row, when you're getting this zero, the only row that would change would be row two. You just rewrite row one and row three when you're going after that zero there. And then the fourth row uh, rule, which is the last one, says that if um, you are in column one, 
use row one. If you're in column two, use row two. And if you're in column three, use row three. So those are your rules that will, I think, guide you uh, successfully through. I'll show you a quick example. This is, <clears throat> just copy this. Uh, so using those rules, um, trying to apply those rules, I'm going to go for uh, the zeros first. It's, it's not easy to get a one in this upper left. I can't divide through by six because I'll get fractions. I can't swap any rows. Uh, so I'm going to go for the zeros because rule number two says it's not easy to get, a, to get a one in the upper left. So to go for the zero, the first zero I'm going to go for is, is uh, this guy here. And I think I can do that by multiplying uh, row one by two and just adding it to row two and getting a new row two. So I would start this out by multiplying <clears throat> six times two, negative one times two, and four times two. I just rewrite row two, negative 12, two, two, negative eight, and adding this up, zero, zero, oh, this is nice, zero, 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 ooh, haven't talked about this yet, have I? Zero, 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 zero. Well, what happens if everything zeroes out? Well, that says zero x plus zero y plus zero z is equal to zero, and that means zero does equal zero, which is a true statement, which means we have infinitely many solutions. So uh, I don't think we've, we've talked about that, but now that means um, I can write these solutions uh, in terms of the other answers. So remember, the only row that's changing is the row that you're changing. So my new matrix, uh, I'm going to swap rows here in just a second, but just so you can see, it's 0, 0, 0, 0, because the only row that's changing is the row that I'm changing. I tried to get this to be a 0, <clears throat> and I did. It's just something really interesting happened. Because that one, that row is full of all zeros, and that has the most zeros in it, I'm going to dump that actually on the bottom, because remember, I can swap rows. So this is actually 6, negative 1, negative 1, 4. I'm going to swap row 2 and row 3. Uh, you'll see why I'm doing this in just a moment. Because um, I, I want to use z as the parameter. And then I'm going to write x and y in terms of z. So I'm going to leave z in the answer. And then I'm going to end up with an answer like z plus 2 and then 3z minus 4. And then call those my answers. I, don't, I just made those up. But, but my point is uh, I like z to be the parameter. You don't have to, but I, don't, I like z. So I'm going to try this again, and this time I'm going to try to zero out uh, this 5. And I, I think I can do that by multiplying the top row by negative 5. And so let's see, negative 5 times row 1, and then uh, 6 times row 2 uh, should give me a new row 2. And I'm trying to get a zero where that yellow dot is at. So. Remember, the only row that's changing is the row that changes from that 6, negative 1, negative 1, 4 should stay the same. The third row is going to stay the same, which is really interesting. But I'm trying to get a 0 here. Let's see if I accomplish it. So let's take negative 5 times everything. Negative 30, 5, 5, and negative 20. And I'll add it to 6 times here. 30 times 6 times 6 times 6. Add this up, 0, 11, negative 1, and 2. I'm going to bring that over here, 0, 11, negative 1, and 2. So I got a little bit closer. Uh, at least I have my goal. I got a 1 here, and I got a, uh, I got my, excuse me, I got a 0, and I got a 0. The next 0 that I would probably go for is this one. And since I am in column 2, I, I want to use row 2. So I think I'm going to use this 11 to try to zero that guy out. And I can do that by multiplying the top row by 11 and adding it back to row two and coming up with a new row two. And hopefully I'll have, uh, nope, nope, nope. I don't want a new row two. I want a new row, uh, a, a new row one. Because I'm, I'm, trying, to, I'm trying to get that, uh, that pink thing a, a zero. So let's, let's see what happens here. Keep the same process. So 66, negative 11, negative 11, 
44. Row 2 is going to stay the same. 0, 11, negative 9, 2. like I can divide or I can simplify this row. So instead of transferring, remember the only row that's changing is the row that I'm changing. So this 0, 11, negative 1, 2 stays the same. This 0, 0, 0, 0 stays the same. And hopefully I have a 0 here, which I do. But instead of bringing over the 66, 12, and 44, it looks like I could divide everything through by 2 at least. So 33, negative 6, and 22. So I'm going to stop here and see if I can just write the final solution because the video is getting kind of long. Um, let's see. This, this, this means, uh, it, that's my parameters, z. This means 0x, 11y minus z is equal to 2. So if, if I were to solve for y in terms of z, I would have 11y is equal to z plus 2. And if I divide by 11, I have y is equal to, poof. 111 z, or how about z over 11 plus 2 11. So at least I have the z answer is z. The y answer is 2 11. Um, no, what's a z? How about 111 z? Let's not be confusing here. 111 um, uh, z, let's just leave it. 111 z plus 2, well, this is confusing enough because it's just terrible fractions. And then, uh, I'm, I'm sorry to say, this is just a tough problem, but you would have to write out this 33x minus 6z is equal to 22, and I'd have to solve it for x in terms of z, so 33x is equal to 6z plus 22, and so the x, if you divide through by 33, again, not pretty, 6z plus 22 divided by 33. So here's my x answer in terms of z. Here's my y answer in terms of z. Ugh. 6z plus 22 divided by 33. Tough, tough solution. Uh, might have made a mistake somewhere in there. But that's the process. Uh, looks like I'm close because that's what we got, right? 111z minus 211z. Yeah, it's just tough. Oh, there it is. 211z uh, plus 711z. Wow. It's just tough. Yeah, I made a mistake somewhere in there. Okay, but that's the process. Um, look, for my, look for my error and email me.